The heat of the Romanian summer was oppressive, but it was the tension in the air that weighed on us the most. By 1944, the war had turned against us, and the once mighty Wehrmacht was struggling to hold its ground. In Romania, we were fighting not just to defend our lines, but to keep the Soviets from breaking through into the heart of Europe. I was stationed with my unit near the Carpathian Mountains, tasked with holding a key position against the relentless Soviet advance. The terrain was rugged, with thick forests and steep hills, making movement difficult. We were well dug in, but we knew that the Soviets were coming with overwhelming force. As the days wore on, the distant rumble of artillery grew louder, signaling the approach of the Red Army. We spent our nights in the trenches, unable to sleep, listening to the sounds of the front drawing nearer. The air was filled with the smell of gunpowder and the acrid smoke of burning villages, and we knew it was only a matter of time before the battle reached us. When the Soviets finally attacked, it was with a ferocity we had not expected. Their artillery rained down on us, turning the earth into a churning sea of mud and debris. The ground shook with the force of the explosions, and the noise was deafening. We huddled in our trenches, clutching our rifles, trying to block out the fear that gnawed at our insides. Then came the infantry, waves of Soviet soldiers charging through the smoke and fire. We opened up with everything we had machine guns, rifles, even throwing grenades, but there were so many of them. They kept coming, seemingly endless, driven by a determination that matched our own desperation. The fighting was brutal, with the trenches becoming a deadly quagmire of mud, blood, and bodies. The Soviets fought with a relentless energy, pressing us back step by step. We counterattacked whenever we could, but it was like trying to hold back a flood with our bare hands. The losses on both sides were staggering, but the Soviets had the advantage in numbers and momentum. As the days turned into weeks, it became clear that we couldn't hold out forever. The Soviets were breaking through our lines, encircling us, cutting off our supply routes. Morale was low, and the men were exhausted, both physically and mentally. Yet we fought on, driven by the knowledge that surrender was not an option. The fear of what the Soviets would do if they captured us was a powerful motivator. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the order came to retreat. We were to fall back to a more defensible position, regroup, and prepare for the next assault. The retreat was chaotic, with units getting separated and some men simply collapsing from exhaustion. But we had no choice staying meant certain death or capture. As we made our way through the forests and hills, I couldn't help but think about how much had changed since the early days of the war. Back then, we had marched through Europe with confidence, certain of our victory. Now, we were the ones being pushed back, fighting for our survival in a war that seemed to have no end. The retreat was a bitter pill to swallow, but we knew it was the only way to live to fight another day. As we regrouped at our new position, the men were silent, their faces grim. We knew that the Soviets would be on us again soon, and that the fight for Romania was far from over. But we were soldiers, and as long as we had breath in our bodies, we would continue to fight. The war had taken everything from us our friends, our youth, our hope, but it hadn't taken our resolve. Not yet.